Here we have a specimen from the lungs. It was probably described as unilateral mass on an x-ray or CD scan. And uh, not every pulmonary mass is necessarily a tumor. Secondary pulmonary tuberculosis, especially asthma focus at the apex of the lung, can look exactly like malignant tumor, for example. However, on microscopic examination, we would see granulomas with cassius necrosis in this case. Inter interstitial lung diseases are usually diffuse and bilateral or sometimes multifocal and uh, they do not look like a solitary tumor mass. The most common benign lesion in the lungs is chondrohamartoma, which consists of cartilage with entrapped clefts of respiratory epithelium. And uh, among malignant tumors, the most common types are adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, small cell carcinoma and large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma and of course undifferentiated carcinoma which looks like uh, undifferentiated malignant tumor where uh, we cannot recognize the specific subtype. Mm, so these types will be high in our differential diagnosis if we look at malignant looking pulmonary mass under the microscope. Um, <clears throat> metastatic disease or metastasis from distant organs are also very common in the lungs. So let's have a look at this specific case. It doesn't look like uh, pulmonary parenchyma and definitely, definitely resembles a uh, malignant tumor with these multiple necrotic foci. We don't see any uh, glandular structures, therefore it's probably not. Uh, adenocarcinoma and uh, these cells are not small and uniform therefore this is probably not small cell carcinoma but some of these structures actually resembles squamous epithelium or at least dysplastic squamous epithelium and indeed we are looking at squamous cell carcinoma and if you look at normal squamous epithelium uh, in the epidermis, for example, on the surface we can see keratinization. And also this malignant squamous cell carcinoma uh, can create keratin. One of the most important signs of this tumor is um, squamous keratin perils formation. We also call them squamous eddies because of uh, circular shape. Here we have multiple keratin perils. This is actually necrosis. And here we see malignant cells. Um, <clears throat> here we have inflammatory cells. Those are lymphocytes. And we can see uh, the round, dark nuclei. Another sign is uh, retention of intercellular bridges or desmosomes in between the malignant cells. Um, and uh, they are usually seen in well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. They are not always seen and we need to carefully search for them. Intercellular bridges are also called spikes and uh, they are normally very prominent in spatum spinosum uh, in the normal epidermis as you remember from normal histology and uh, <clears throat> therefore squamous cell carcinoma is sometimes called spinocellular carcinoma so spinocellular carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma uh, is, the, is, um, is the same tumor Mm, so let's have a look if we can find some intercellular bridges. Mm. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe this is moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma and intercellular bridges are not, not prominent here. Oh yeah, here, here we can see the very tiny very tiny structures which are desmosomes in between the cells here. 
The common risk factor for squamous cell carcinoma in the lungs is smoking, and the classical localization is um, in the central part of the lung that goes together with S mnemonic squamous cell carcinoma, smoking in central location. Cigarette smoke causes irritation of normal respiratory type of epithelium, and we often see uh, squamous metaplasia among smokers as a reaction to, um, to aggressive cigarette smoke. And in cigarette smoke, um, there are multiple mutagens, and uh, therefore, over the time, uh, <clears throat> we can see dysplastic changes in the squamous type of epithelium. So, the sequence goes like this we have normal respiratory type of epithelium then metaplasia into squamous type of epithelium, then dysplasia and dysplastic squamous epithelium, then carcinoma in situ, and over the time, uh, carcinoma in situ uh, um, become um, invasive carcinoma, and we have squamous carcinoma in the lungs. Uh, this tumor is quite aggressive in the lungs and also in the oral mucosa or in the tongue, for example, but it has much better prognosis in the epidermis. Uh, so the resection is usually enough uh, if we have a, a small squamous cell carcinoma in the epidermis. However, in case of lungs, um, uh, we need to use radiotherapy and chemotherapy after uh, surgery or resection of the tumor. If we use immunohistochemistry, uh, these malignant cells are usually positive for cytokeratin 5 and 6 and for P63 or P40 and it is negative for TTF1 uh, which helps us in differential diagnosis in poorly differentiated cases. Okay, so this is squamous cell carcinoma. One of the reasons why I quit smoking before it's too late.